welcome to Josh and some two pesos. Today I just wanted to give my two pesos about this sterilizer that I got. So today we're going to look at some of my new equipment, my installations, and any updates that I have. So I looked online and I did not see any videos on the Oase Claritronic UVC 7 watt sterilizer. So according to this label here, the sterilizer should be suitable for aquariums up to 66 gallons. I'll be putting it on my 40 breeder, so it should work just fine. The purpose of this video is to do a simple unboxing so that everybody can kind of see what's inside the packaging. And I'll also be doing a simple install. The reason why I purchased this sterilizer is because the Oasi brand is famous for their filters. So I figured that I'd give their sterilizer a try. Here are some of the usual items inside the box. I compared the specifications of this sterilizer to others that claimed to be able to sterilize bacteria as well as algae. A competitor's sterilizer with similar specifications claimed that their sterilizer is able to sterilize bacteria as well as algae with similar wattage. But the Oasi sterilizer was more affordable and more available. So why would somebody need a sterilizer? If you ever have cloudy water, it could be because of an algae bloom or a bacterial bloom. Now what a sterilizer does is it stops the microorganisms such as bacteria and algae from reproducing. It doesn't actually kill these organisms, it just causes them to be sterile. These microorganisms have short life cycles and they die off within a few days. So even though these one cell microorganisms have short life cycles, some people still struggle with cloudy water and that's because these microorganisms multiply really fast. So you may ask, how does this work? When the water passes through the sterilizer, it has a ultraviolet light that sterilizes these microorganisms. So they're not actually dead, but they can't reproduce. So from my research, sterilizers with less wattage will only be able to sterilize algae and not bacteria. So before you install your sterilizer, you want to plan where you want to install it. Due to the fact that you have to maintain and clean your sterilizer once in a while, it makes sense to install it after the filter. Because if the quartz glass gets dirty, the UV light will not be able to sterilize anything. All right, so let's get right into the installation. Um, so I gotta think about all my plumbing. I gotta think about my CO2, my regulator, my reactor. I gotta think about the position of the sterilizer. And so it's saying here that we can't install the sterilizer upside down on the top or upside down on the side. So we could install it horizontally, but it needs to be installed facing up it cannot be installed horizontally facing down. And it could be installed vertically, but it needs to be facing up. Another thing that I wanted to point out is that we have to know the direction of flow. So the bottom one is the input, and the top one is the output. So this is important when you're thinking about your plumbing. Another important thing that we have to look at is the O-ring for the input and output. According to this picture, the point of contact is in between the male threads, and the input or output elbow. The next thing I wanted to look at is the mounts.
in order to mount it to a cabinet, you have to disassemble the sterilizer. Another thing that we have to think about is maintenance. So we have to understand how to take it apart, how to replace the bulb. And so we have to make room in our installation so that no other equipment is blocking us from opening the sterilizer to maintain it. In order to disassemble the sterilizer, you have to unscrew this screw right here. And then you just pull out this glass quartz. And install the UV light and make sure the O-ring is on there. After I reinstalled the quartz glass, I made sure to clean it. One thing that everybody needs to know is the size for the hose. The inner diameter needs to be 5 eighths of an inch. It could be 7 eighths outer diameter. ID stands for inner diameter and OD stands for outer diameter. So you can have the 7 eighths. I tried it and it fits. There's a smaller option with a 3 quarters of an inch outer diameter but the walls are going to be thinner so you're going to have a thinner tube. It's not going to be as strong or durable as the 7 eighths of an inch but it will be more flexible and it will be easier to seal on the output or input. But then since it's flexible it's also more susceptible to bending or folding. So this sterilizer uses this compression fitting. The way it works is you first tighten the nut to the sterilizer and then you put your hose on and then you reverse the nut and by reversing it you're actually compressing the hose and that creates a seal. This plug comes with this cover which is kind of neat. So here I have the sterilizer mounted onto my cabinet with two screws. I believe my screws are half inch screws. You gotta make sure that it doesn't go through the cabinet boards. So I had to go buy these 36 inch plumber's wrenches in order to tighten my reactor. I had to use these nylon spacers behind this bracket in order to allow room for the ball valves and the PVC unions. So here's my completed plumbing. And I installed a union above the sterilizer so that whenever I need to maintain the sterilizer, I can remove my plumbing to make room to maintain my sterilizer. I installed a ball valve on top so that I can turn off the water for maintenance. On the top left, I installed this ball valve so that I can shut off the flow to this input. Now I installed this ball valve so I can remove this fitting. This push to connect fitting is for my CO2 line. If there's air in my CO2 reactor, I can remove this piece to allow the air to escape. On the top and on the bottom, I've installed two unions so that I can easily remove the CO2 reactors for maintenance. In case the clear PVC gets dirty, I can easily remove the CO2 reactor without removing the entire plumbing. And I especially do not want to remove the screws for the brackets every time I maintain it. I installed a lower ball valve in order to drain my plumbing and I installed a union so I can attach tubes for water changes. So here's the reactor installed, and I do have water in the system. So 
So this LED light shows that the UV bulb is working. If the bulb is dead, the LED would not turn on. I've added these hose clamps in order to ensure that there's no leaks. At first, it might not leak, but after a while, it always leaks, especially with a lot of maintenance and moving things around. This middle tube here is my CO2 reactor's bypass. I can control the bypass with this ball valve here. As you can see here, I added a lot of PVC cement because in the past I've had a lot of bad experiences with leaks and so I've made sure that there was a lot of PVC cement this time. So I found a leak. It's on the bottom of my CO2 reactor where the threads are. I just have to add more pipe tape and tighten the threads. So for now I'm just going to put this cup here to collect the water. So in case people are not familiar with the push to connect fittings, all you have to do is insert a quarter inch tubing. So here I am installing the tubing. So the way that these push to connect fittings work is they have an o-ring inside and there's these little metal pieces that grip onto the hosing or the tubing and it actually slightly cuts itself into the tubing. In order to pull it out, you just press the little black piece underneath, that's why it's called a push to connect you push that up and it releases the tubing. If you look at the tubing afterwards, the metal pieces inside have cut into the tubing slightly. If you have tubing that has been used before, you have to cut that piece off and use a freshly cut tubing because it'll leak due to the metal pieces cutting it. I just have regular aquarium tubing. I don't even use the CO2 tubing because I've never needed it. Um, I've never had any problems with regular aquarium tubing. I've never had any leaks. I use a reactor so my tubing is not under high pressure. My regulator is only turned up to 20 psi. Some people use ceramic diffusers which require 30 to 40 psi. So you would probably use a CO2 tubing for that. In case people have questions about these regulators, I recommend getting a dual stage because single stage CO2 regulators have a risk of dumping CO2 into the aquarium and it can be deadly to livestock. So that's why I only get dual stage CO2 regulators. So here's the reactor. It's mixing the CO2. It's for the plants, if you don't know. Here's my aquarium. Um, currently I have this mini Pilia vitro moss. Um, it's sterilized so there won't be any pests or snails or algae or anything like that. I hate snails so that's why I prefer to get tissue culture cups of plants whenever I can. So there we have it. That should wrap everything up. Thanks for watching. If you find this content helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe to my channel. This is Joshism and that's my two pesos.